have you. Michaels pulled referee Earl Hebner right in front of Bret Hart. And I think Hart and the referee hit head. Is that a disqualification? It might be if he could get up and call it. And again, Michaels raking the face. What is... Look at this! Oh, you're kidding me. Michaels, are you going to call me Bret Hart with a sharpshooter? Yes, he is! By the time Bret Hart stepped center stage for his matchup with Shawn Michaels at Survivor Series, he had apparently already closed the door on his WWF career. Uh, I um, even my 30-day notice to WWF. And right now I'm under contractual review with both the WCW and the WWF. I'm leaning strongly towards going one way. In the end, his actions spoke volumes. Let's cut right to the chase. Seven days ago at the Survivor Series, did you or did you not screw Bret Hart? Some would say, I screwed Bret Hart. Bret Hart would definitely tell you, I screwed him. I look at it from a different standpoint. I look at it from the standpoint of the referee did not screw Bret Hart. Shawn Michaels certainly did not screw Bret Hart. Nor did Vince McMahon screw Bret Hart. I truly believe that Bret Hart screwed Bret Hart. And you can look in the mirror and know that. I'm sure in some parts of the country right now there's a collective groan that you're not accepting responsibility. That you orchestrated the situation. And the fact that uh, there, people are not going to understand what you mean by Bret Hart screwed Bret Hart. So what do you mean by that? Well, I will certainly take responsibility for any decision I've ever made. I've never had a problem doing that. Not that all of my decisions are accurate. They're not. But when I make a bad decision, I'm not above saying I'm sorry and trying to do the best uh, about it that I can. Hopefully the batting average is, is pretty good. I make more good decisions than I do bad decisions. And as far as screwing Bret Hart is concerned, there's a time-honored tradition in the wrestling business that when someone is leaving, that they show the right amount of respect to the WWF superstars, in this case, who helped make you that superstar. You show the proper respect to the organization that helped you become who you are today. It's a time-honored tradition, and Bret Hart didn't want to honor that tradition. And that's something I would have never, ever expected from Brett, because he is known somewhat as a traditionalist in this business. It would have never crossed my mind that Brett would not have wanted to show the right amount of respect to the superstars who, make, who helped make him and the organization who helped make him what he is today. Nonetheless, that was Brett's decision. Brett screwed Brett. WBCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. Enough is enough, and it's time for a change. I can't believe I'm putting my voice to this. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. Thank you for your irrelevant opinion. And now, here's your host of Pro Wrestling Weekly, Ferran Derry. The first thing you need to do is to tell these people to shut up if you want to hear what I got to say. I'm a broadcast journalist. I have a right to my opinion. Oh, son of a... 
I am the best on this microphone, in that ring, even at commentary. And the sound of the bell means that we are off. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Taking a hell of a stroll down memory lane. 16 years ago today, the 1997 Survivor Series and what has been affectionately known in the business of professional wrestling as the Montreal Screwjob. Man, that brings back a lot of memories. Ferran Derry here alongside RC from Completely Damaged. It's good to be in your house for a change now, Ferran. I know. Usually I'm making the uh, the trek up to Montgomery County Community College every Thursday to uh, to kind of help you with your show. I think what you meant is every Thursday from 11 to noon, heard on MoncoRadio.com, Completely Damaged Radio. Yes, MoncoRadio.com, yes. where music How does it feel me. now, Ferran? I'm in your turf now saying that. There, I, feel, yes. I felt good. I'll for for those of you who haven't listened, I'm, I'm notorious for promoting my own show at least once during his show. So now, yes, the and show is right on the now, other foot. Matt Porter is laughing hysterically. And Matt, that was for you, brother. Matt Porter, the producer and yes, uh, right. one of the, uh, the fine professors at Montgomery County Community College. Yep. Damage his own. Yeah, so he, he's been around since pretty close to the beginning, if yeah. I remember right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. Porter's uh, he's contributed to a few different things, but yeah, the the, the Montreal screw job uh, that it, it feels like the one of the mo- more historic moments in professional wrestling. I mean, right up there with I don't know the d- the day that uh, Bruno San Martino's yeah. longest championship reign ended. Yeah, you know, back in the back in seventy one. I mean, for example, it, it's just it's something. It's almost one of those "Where were you when?" type deals. So that intro brought back a lot of memories, a lot of chills. Yeah, I yeah, mean, Brett the, screwed Brett, man. Mm-hmm. And and that was the debut in a sense. I mean, it kind of happened organically, but the debut of the Mister McMahon character that helped the World Wrestling Federation take off and and conquer WCW and the ratings eventually and lead them to the worldwide phenomenon that they are today. Yeah. Uh, so I, one of the th- I mean there's there's so much to talk about this week. Uh, uh, one of the things that's been kind of sticking in my mind uh, I mean a lo- I wanted to look at it historically and uh, we're going to certainly do that. Adding to the factor, we've got uh, well, we've got high school football coming up at uh, about twelve forty-five, maybe twelve fifty. So, uh, so it's a little bit of a shorter show than usual. Uh, Lucas, the intern, not with us today. He's uh, he's a little bit under the weather, so uh, hopefully he'll be feeling better soon, be able to get back with us. And uh, don't worry, I didn't have permanently have him uh, cast off the show, much to the potential delight of uh, producer Nick Cataldi. Yay! There we go. Yes, he, he has to get that. That's his plug. Nice. Well, I mentioned these, you know, turning the dials, pushing the buttons, keeping us Short on the air. Short but sweet. I like it. That's that's usually what works best. That's what she said. Oh, damaged. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I don't even know where to go. Uh, yeah. We, well, we were talking on Thursday show. And I was going to kind of carry it over to here, based on, and I know people have more than likely heard more than they want to about this, but. So I, I won't touch too much on the actual subject in the NFL, the whole bullying, Richie Incognito, Jonathan Martin thing. I'm sure you've heard more than you want to hear about it over the course of the week. But it got me to thinking of instances or characters of bullying in wrestling. And and we talked a little bit about uh, how they seem to be prevalent despite WWE's Be a Star campaign. And uh, I don't know. It's It's... It's a little, it's it's a little frustrating. It's a little annoying. I mean, you see it in TNA with Bully Ray. You see it with Ryback and uh, picking on people in catering. And it's not exactly something new in professional wrestling. And I, I made reference to, yeah, I can make reference to it here as well as there. Why not? It's my show, right? But uh, Vince McMahon, gosh, going back about twelve years ago now, where he. Uh, had Trish Stratus in the ring and oh, yeah. had her, yeah, had her stripped down to her bra and panties, made her crawl around the ring and, and bark like a dog. I mean, that, that, I don't know, that, that's the video that Linda McMahon doesn't want you to find because that was one of the go to things that uh, she had in her uh, campaign when she was running for Senate. That was one of the, the go to things that her opponents had, I should say. And uh, they did everything that they could do 
make sure that, that video disappeared from the internet as best as possible. But well, there makes good segments and awkward, horrible segments, and that along with the Ryback catering thing, it's just. I didn't know what to say at the words. Like it's uncomfortable, just, yeah, I think uncomfortable. is is the yeah. best way to describe it. And no need, you know. Yeah, I, I'm. I don't know that. That's. So I wanted to get your thoughts on. Well, you're out there. Thoughts on that? We'll kind of kick that around. We've got a, a bunch of different news and notes. I've got an update on the new impact zone. We'll talk about that. Uh, we've got. Uh, I don't know how how this gets brought into wrestling, but we're going to talk about the uh, the crack smoking mayor of Toronto. <laughs> God. Yeah, somehow Did he's... Did you see the video about Brutus the Barber Beefcake? That, that's what I was going to yeah. talk about. Yeah, oh, he went man. to try, to, uh, try to, to visit Mayor Rob Ford up there north of the border. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get into that right now. Yeah, uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, former WWF superstar. He was escorted out of Toronto City Hall this past Thursday. He was trying to speak with the controversial Mayor Rob Ford, in case you didn't hear. We just mentioned it briefly. The controversy is because the Mayor of Toronto was recently caught smoking crack. Mm. I thought make him a bad guy. <clears throat> well, I'm not one to pass judgment. That's not what I do as a broadcast journalist. But I just I prevent, present the facts and question answers and answer questions. That's that's pretty much what I do. Well, I have a question. Do you think it's okay for a guy to be kissed on a first date? Depends on who's kissing me. Okay, okay, okay. Good, <laughs> good enough. Go ahead. Back to beefcake. That's yeah, oh, no, you, that's... Brought up, you brought me up again, eh? <laughs> Not, I didn't know your first name was Brutus. It isn't. You said beefcake. <laughs> yeah. He was there preaching uh, to, to help get the, the mayor's mind and body right and promoted some sort of belly buster sandwich that looked a lot like what we'd call in this area a hoagie. Most people refer to it as a sub. That's a whole another debate for uh, regional. Up there, maybe. Around here is a hoagie. Exactly. Around, around, around here, exactly. We know it is a hoagie. But it, it was all a publicity stunt, and uh, I guess he got the publicity because here we are talking about it. Exactly. Go figure. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, Jeff Hardy and his new CD release. And uh, actually, this this kind of just in over the course of last night. And unfortunately, these things seem to happen on Friday, and we kind of get the first word on them on Saturday. But a notable release from WWE, uh, at least in the uh, NXT developmental uh, realm, WWE reportedly releasing Chris Spradlin, also known in NXT as Cassius Ono, uh, from his developmental deal, the 33-year-old signed with WWE back in February of last year. He had worked as Chris Hero, and that's probably what he's best known as, uh, for Ring of Honor and uh, all throughout the independents before signing with WWE. And, of course, he teamed with Claudio Castagnoli, who you know in WWE as Antonio Cesaro. They were known as the King of or Kings of Wrestling. Yep throughout the indies as well so can i tell you it's another one of those things where i feel wwe dropped the ball they don't know what to do with someone so they just get rid of them and you know i would have loved to see um him and antonio back together against the kings of wrestling and to spark this tag team division again but you know who knows what they're thinking well my long-standing thought process is that vince has always been at least i shouldn't say always but within the last five ten years has been lukewarm at best to well really to uh to, to tag teams because i think from a financial standpoint why pay two people to do what one person, one person can do yeah. you know if i want a tag team i'll just take two singles wrestlers pair them together and boom i've got a tag team why do i have to have specific tag teams and i guess he's kind of losing out on his uh on his historic uh, past, you know, looking back into the 80s with the, uh, you know, w- with, with the Hart Foundation, with the fabulous Rougeos, with the British Bulldogs, you know, a, a, a few different uh, notable, I mean, I mean, that's just, you know, some of the, you know, the you've got the, the demolition, uh, the powers of pain, I could go on from that era, you go to the early 90s, you have the Legion of Doom, the Nasty Boys, the Natural Disasters, Money Incorporated. Yeah. You know, even into the late 90s, you know, you had the Hardys, you had the Dudleys, you had uh, Edge and Christian, you had, you know, too much or too cool. You know, it worked it, back it, then. Yeah, it, yeah, it worked, but now it just it doesn't seem to be the same. Yeah. And the wrestlers don't seem to be the same either. Like the gimmicks and, you know, so much going on then compared to now. 3MB, you know, it's like enough's enough and it's time for a change. <laughs> Yeah, I did kind of throw that into my intro. It's the first time that you had heard that yeah. since uh, since coming up here. So I that's uh, that's certainly been a thing. Mm-hmm. All right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna take our first set of business here, and uh, we'll we'll come back. We'll talk a little bit about 
the WWE lawsuit, wink, wink, air quotes, etc., with Big Show and Triple H and Stephanie. I almost, I almost feel disgusted having to talk about it, but uh, I'm going to anyway because it's... Well, we, we do recaps here, and that's one of the things to recap. Here on this shortened edition, RC from Completely Damaged. We'll also get more of your thoughts on uh, on bullying, your recollections of the Montreal screw job, which, of course, was 16 years ago today. Wow. Yeah, November 9th, 1997. Jeez. I know. Where, where, where does the time go? Yeah. And more news and notes as well, including... Uh, have you ever thought about writing for TNA? Well, you yeah. might have a possibility. We'll really? talk about that. Also, uh, an Olympic wrestler signing with WWE, and it's not who you think. It's true. It's true. All that and more. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. You're just swinging for the fences like between last week and this week. You're just knocking them out of the park. Well, what can I say? I want to make it in this world. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your host, Ferran Derry. The insanity is abound. If you want to just shut the show down and just say, forget it, we're going to go home? That is not fair. Thank you. Can I have my show back now? It's a constant struggle here. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you alongside R.C. from Completely Damaged. The voice that you heard there, R.C., is uh, of Lucas the intern yeah, who, yeah. Familiar. Who was that other guy? He's terrible. Uh, I don't know. You want to put program back up there, Nick, so we can hear you? Oh, I'm there sorry. We, there Thank we you. go. You know, without you, I'm lost. Who's that other voice? I, I That guy was horrible. It's about to turn the show off. That guy stinks. He's, 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 he's oh, never mind. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. In the interim, let's... Uh, <laughs> Oh, it's all about having fun here. At least that's what we're trying to do. Now, some some people would uh, would would argue that I, uh, yeah that I'm I'm ribbing or having a little bit of fun with, uh, with with Lucas when I throw those clips in there. But I mean, he knows and I know we, we've talked about it off air that it's it's all in good natured fun and there's no uh, no malicious intent necessary uh, yeah necessarily implied. And uh, yeah, coming up in uh, in just a little bit here, we should be uh, we should actually be hearing from. Uh, Corey Castle, who we had on here a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we yeah we had on our yeah he's going to give us a little bit of an update. Last night they had the uh, the rap party for Wrestling with Disaster, and uh, yeah we'll we'll kind of get an update on how things are going with that. We uh, we had him on here. I mentioned that I threw down a few uh, a few shekels for it. Uh, Definitely, yeah, and and I'm really looking forward to uh, to checking out the, the the movie once it's completed. And with the pictures they had up from last night, it looks like they had a pretty decent turnout. Which is really yeah, un- unfortunately, I couldn't be one of them because I ended up working until about one thirty in the morning and then had to be here. Yeah, going from the full-time job to here, I was here at 6 a.m. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah. That's usually why the, the quality of the shows is always a little questionable because at this point, I'm at best running on about two to three hours sleep so that's why i said sleep deprivation and a bad attitude makes for an interesting unfiltered combination yeah well you know what i mean my thing to do well yeah you you said the loose cannon and that uh, here's the issue with that okay that was the name of the predecessor of this show eric gargiulo he was known as eric the loose cannon uh, loose cannon gargiulo so i feel like i'd be stepping on his territory so uh, i was kind of just kicking things around in my twisted messed up brain (laughs) and and i don't know the the first thing that came to my mind is unfiltered unfiltered because uh, yeah, I mean yeah. that's what I am. I'm 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 raw. I'm the the I'm, I'm better than the Monday night version. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm I'm the bad apple that spoils the whole damn orchard. That's that's what I am. So you gotta say in your McMahon voice, you're the. Where where are you trying to lead me with this? The unfiltered Ferran Derry. That was pitiful. Thank you, thank you. That's why you, that's why you, you do that so well. I, I yeah I, 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 try. I, I know I don't I don't rock out the Vince McMahon voice here as much as I do on completely damaged. That's okay. where I get to be uh, be more of a Richard on the air and get away <laughs> with it. You know, I, I can I can I can be yeah the, the as unfiltered as I am. It's even more so on completely damaged. No topic goes unturned, even topics that I can't talk about here on WBCB. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> it's it's yeah it's all it's almost like Mean Gene Okerlund in the old nine hundred uh, WCW hotlines. You know uh, from back in the day. Yeah. All right, we're uh, 
we're, we're working on getting a couple of things together here. In fact, let's uh, let's go ahead and bring up the uh, the phones here. Kind of doing it all here. Let's uh, let's get Corey up on the line here. Corey Castle, what's going on, brother? Hey, Ron, how you doing, man? I, not, uh, really not too bad. Wanted, wanted, to, <laughs> wanted to add something in. Uh, wanted to uh, have you let your producer know that it's sometimes okay to kiss on the first date. I know he was asking that earlier. For it, it is sometimes okay to kiss on the first date. <laughs> sometimes it's okay. <laughs> but Thank you, Corey. I was wondering. Okay. I don't want the girl thinking I'm some kind of easy or something. I mean, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You, you want to, you want to, you know, you want to. Switch a little bit. Show me some respect. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Fran. Uh, Corey, go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where to jump in with that without uh, without a potential lawsuit of my own down the road. So let, let's let's go to let's let's go to you here, Corey. What's going on with wrestling? Wrestling with disaster. Five days left on our Kickstarter campaign uh, to raise up the money in order to finish the movie, and. Uh, we had, we had a little fundraiser last night uh, at the Hellraiser's Motorcycle Club in, in Philly. And, uh, you know, we had, had some fans out there, had some wrestlers out there. Samu was there. Uh, we had we had Gary Wolf there. We had Grey Wolf. A whole, whole lot of people out to support the film. I mean, we still need your guys' help. We got five more days. If you don't get in five days. You don't get anything. <laughs> Everything, yeah. That that that's that's the like crucial thing. If 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 the goal isn't reached, whatever has been raised thus far, you, you don't get any of it. Even the shekels that I put in, uh, I get the shekels back. Which, yes. Yeah, I was hoping I was hoping to give those shekels. Well, They're important shekels. Yeah. <laughs> no 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 shekels are unimportant. This is true. There's a whole socio-political discussion that could follow from that, but we're not going to. I, I'm understanding that you have um, that you have a shorter show today, so I just wanted to kind of get on for a couple seconds and just talk about it because I know you have a few topics that you want to talk about. But uh, you know, if you can get to WrestlingWithTheDesert dot com, if you go to Kickstarter dot com, search Wrestling with the Death, you're only available only available for four more days or for five more days. Pardon me. To uh, yeah, through this Thursday, right? This Thursday, yes. Okay, just uh, clarifying and you know throw, throwing na- dates and you know put it put yeah I mean five days I'm sure people can count all right nine plus five is four yeah my listeners are somewhat smart <laughs> well mo- most of them are smart there are a couple that uh, aren't so much but we like them anyway right, all right. well uh, I mean. Yeah, well, how was, uh, yeah, I was going to say, wasn't the, um, I, I'm, first of all, I'm, I'm disappointed I wasn't able to get to, to go to the uh, to the fundraising gig last night, but uh, how, how uh, I mean, what, what was the atmosphere like? How, you know, how was it, you know, seeing the different, uh, I mean, well, for you seeing the different wrestlers, I mean, you're one of them, so it, it's, I guess, a different a different outlook for you, but I mean, as, as far as, as turnout, how did, how did it help as far as the cause, things like that? Um, well... I mean, we're still far along. You know what I mean? We're we didn't we didn't quite get the turnout that we expected. However, it was fun. I mean, it was a good time. I mean, there was a lot of a lot of supportive faces and uh, people there. Uh, you know, going above and beyond, and uh, that was that was really cool. But you know, at this point, we're still a little bit far away from our goal, and we could use all the support that we can get. And, uh, you know, um, it's unfortunate that you couldn't come, but, uh, you know, we, we understood. I mean, I got, I heard from you, like, after I was on my way back to my house, I was like, oh. I know. I'm, I'm like, just leaving work at about, you know, quarter to two in the morning. I'm going, is there, is there, is something still going on? Am I too late? And you were just like, yeah, I'm already on my way home. You didn't, you didn't get the audible, oh, from me, but that's pretty much what I was doing on the way home. Just disappointment. That's all right. Well, we'll get you know we'll we'll get the rest of the funds, get the film finished, and that will relinquish said disappointment. That's that's the game plan. Yeah, I, of course. I mean, but at, at the same time, if any fans or anybody uh, wants to ask me any questions or reach out to me, you can do that. Find me on find me on Twitter or on Facebook. 
I almost said MySpace. It's on with me. Wow. <laughs> hey, if you want to plug your MySpace, hey, there's Go nothing ahead. wrong with that. Two, uh, 2009, I might have been doing that. Maybe 2008. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, Corey Castle, C-O-R-Y-K-A-S-T-L-E. T- time is kind of valuable at this point. Uh, where you go, uh, re- W underscore W underscore disaster is uh, how you can follow the project on Twitter. And, okay, uh, that's the Twitter, at W underscore W underscore disaster. Got it. Yes. And, uh, you know, have any questions, feel free. Hit me up. Hit up Anthony. Yeah, I actually have him on conference call right now, so if you want to say hi real quick. Hello, Ferran. Anthony, what's going on? The wave of the future, this technology and conference calling and things like that. Yeah, I, you know, I was letting Corey talk uh, there. He, he was doing such a good job. I said, you know what? They don't even have to tell me that. Tell anybody on here. It's okay. Oh, well, I mean, you know, you're, you're just the, the producer and co-creator of the film. I mean, what do you have to do with it? No, I was I was actually enjoying being able to be silent. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, in that case, I don't. I don't want to uh, deprive you of your joy of silence. So, uh, we're we're kind of up against it anyway. But thanks so much for chiming in. I'm I'm, I'm really pulling for you guys. I mean, I've I've already. I may have to pull out a few more shekels. I'll, I'll see what I can spare from the, uh, the the grocery fund or something. And hopefully, everybody else will as well to uh, to get this going. Look up on Kickstarter. Wrestling with disaster. Really looking forward to it. Just need a little bit more help. And uh, thank you guys again for uh, for for checking in. Thanks, right, thank you very much. Anthony Bruno, Corey Castle, thank you guys so much for, uh, for, for chiming in. All right, let's take care of our uh, second time out here. we got about 10 minutes until uh, high school football here on WBCB. We'll come back. We'll get a little bit of news and notes out of the way. Might be able to squeeze in time for a call as well here on Pro Wrestling Weekly on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, November 9. On this date in 2008, TNA held its Turning Point pay-per-view. In the main event, Sting pinned AJ Styles to retain the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. On this date in 2009, WWE Monday Night Raw aired from Sheffield, England. In the main event, Shawn Michaels and Triple H defeated Chris Jericho and The Big Show in a tag team match. On this date in 1997, the WWF held its Survivor Series pay-per-view. In the main event, Shawn Michaels defeated Bret Hart by submission to win the World Wrestling Federation Championship. Well, of course, you knew that. We've been talking about it for most of the hour. But did you know that in the semi-main event, Steve Austin defeated Owen Hart to win the Intercontinental Championship? Ha! This has been Today in Wrestling History, November 9. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. An abbreviated show for Ron Derry here alongside RC from Completely Damaged. Nick Cataldi in the house pushing buttons, turning dials, Yay. cheering himself as he usually does. That wasn't me. I mean, that wasn't me. Great disguising of voices. And also punching up the phones as he's going to do now because we're going across the pond for the great Harry Barnett. Harry, what's going on? Well, as usual, for on, it's great to be here on your show. I mean, even if I did get hung up on twice uh, on the way in. Well, yeah, sometimes uh, sometimes technical difficulties happen. We just we try to work with them and work around them. You do what you can do. I definitely think you should bring Lucas back, though, uh, as producer. I mean, that way I can be the one doing the hanging up. <laughs> oh, that's... Uh, well... Like I said, he was under the weather, so uh, you know I'd rather have him here and healthy than uh, you know have him uh, get worse by being in here. I know I say a few things that sicken him at times on the air. <laughs> uh, well, I was listening to the uh, to the show for your your shortened show today, and I heard you talking about bullying and wrestling, and I figured I'd come and share a story with you. Alrighty. So there's this. Um, I, I should really not really name names, but there's this, uh, let, let's say this New Jersey pro wrestler. Let's say the uh, initials are um, A and R. Okay. And 
this guy, you know, he goes into locker rooms and he he's quite small, but he still tries to throw his weight around. And he has certain people that say their initials are T G H B hit by cars because, you know, they speak out about how he's a bully, uh, a no good American fat neck. I may have given something away there. But Possibly. He is a bully, a parasite, and I'm just glad that I had his career ended back at PG-13. Oh, God, I've done it again. <laughs> really got to think before you speak. Yes, that, uh, not doing that will get you in trouble. I've learned that over the, uh, the five-plus years that I've uh, been on the air here at WBCB. Hey, Fortunately, I haven't learned the lesson the hard way, and I hope not to. <laughs> This gets edited, right? Oh, you, you won't hear what I just... Oh, God. No, it's live. Oh, not again. No, he's, gonna, he's probably going to try and come and get me again, but I have something special planned for the American Roughneck. But I thought I'd save that for you. That story for you right now. That announcement I have for him will come out at some point. Interesting. It seems like... yeah. It seems like we have shared issues with, uh, with certain people from... Uh, from Jersey around here, you with the rough neck, and me with somebody who I will make sure not to mention. Oh yeah, I know, I know who we're talking about. Exactly. No words need be said. It's a horrible, a horrible place. Let's just say that. Horrible exactly. Place. We try to keep things somewhat positive here. Hey, the, the Pennsylvania area, the United Kingdom, the best people, other than Brady Hicks. That's the only exception. Other than Brady Hicks. Uh, I was waiting for the Brady Hicks jab. I got to get him in here at uh, some point. Oh, uh, no, you don't want to do that. You don't want to lose listeners. I could hardly do... Mm, no. That, that's the thinking before I speak. I, I started to say something and thought, you know what? I, I thought better of it. There's a good reason for it. Well, I guess you can't call yourself unfiltered. You have to say partially filtered. Right? Oh, yeah, that's true. Partially filtered? Well, if I went unfiltered, I mean, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't have a job by next week. I'd lose both of them. <laughs> oh, well. At least it's, it's a work in know. progress. Yeah. Trying to go for the alliteration. I don't know. There, there are other things I could go with, but it's probably better that I don't. All right, we only, I'm, I'm up against it. The Harry Barnett calling all the way over from England. Greatly appreciate it th- and appreciate your listenership. And uh, hopefully you take care of that AR individual that, uh, that you mentioned. Of course, not mentioning any names. Wow. Thanks, so, thanks so much for the call. All right, we only got a couple minutes here before we've got high school football action. Let's go over some news and notes real quick. I mentioned earlier, want to write for TNA? Well, they're hiring a new writer-producer for their creative team. The responsibilities listed, well... Developing and implementing creative storylines on broadcast or for broadcast on TNA television, building compelling storylines that capture the audience, consistently improve and refine storylines, and use consumer insights and social media to deliver impactful storylines that are consistent with the TNA brand and each talent's skills. Oh, is that all? Yeah, seriously. (laughs) Have they found somebody to do that yet? Apparently not, which is why they've got the... the yeah. But, they're, they're, yeah, if, if you've written for television before, that seems to be the key qualifier, though. So you and I can't exactly throw our, our hat names into the hat. Well, you know, maybe we could, Fran. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Uh, an Olympic wrestler signing with WWE? No, it's not Kurt Angle. 2012 U.S. Olympic wrestler Chaz Betts has announced that he has signed a developmental contract and will begin training at the WWE Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. Uh, his statement on his Facebook page, I am proud to announce I have signed a contract with WWE and begin training at the Performance Center here in Florida. For those who have known me a long time, you know being a pro wrestler has been a dream of mine since I was 11 or 12 years old. I'm honored and humbled by the opportunity. I'm extremely lucky to have a wife and family that has supported me in every dream I've chosen to chase, however unlikely it may be. Never underestimate the power of a good support system, people. So we'll see. Maybe uh, even though he didn't uh, get gold in the, uh, the Olympics... We may have another Olympic uh, wrestler in the fold in WWE. We'll see. Something tells me they'll put him in a red, white, and blue singlet and have him do an ankle lock. Maybe they'll pair him up with Jack Swagger and the Real Americans. Huh. That's creative. Okay, maybe not. 
Update on the new Impact Zone. TNA announcing at the November 21st Impact Wrestling TV taping will be held at Soundstage 19 inside Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. The studio is 16,500 square feet as dressing rooms, showers, all the fun stuff, and the capability of fiber and satellite transmissions. But by comparison, the old Impact Zone was the larger Soundstage 21 listed at 22,000 square feet. So the new Impact Zone, 25% smaller. And real quick, Jeff Hardy releasing his second CD, Plurality of Worlds, this past Thursday, featuring 10 original songs by Jeff Hardy. You can check it out at shoptna.com. Oh, goody. Good for Jeff Hardy. <laughs> I haven't gotten his first CD. I'm kind of intrigued, but I don't know if I'm intrigued enough to buy it. Yeah. That's going to do it for me. Thanks to uh, Nick Cataldi, RC. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. And stay tuned. I believe we've got Matt Miro with the call. We've got high school football. Here on 1490 WBCB.